Welcome back. So we just got our screen configured with our record variable and the name, phone, and email fields. And so now let's try to create those inside Salesforce. I want to point out though that we are missing one of the key fields that is required for creating a lead. And so you can see here that the required fields are company, full name, and status. And I'm intentionally going to leave out the company field, which is definitely going to cause an error, but I want to show you uh, how we can handle that in a unique way in this video. So let's press done and let's go through the step of dragging a create elements to the canvas. Do that now. And we are going to use this create elements in order to create a lead based on our record variable. So I'll just call this a uh, create lead and we're going to create uh, one record and you know, so far throughout the course, we have used um, this bottom option when we're setting the record fields. So we've elected to uh, use separate resources and literal values. What we can do uh, now that we've defined a record variable is just um, pass that variable here. And so you can see all I had to do was click um, search records. And this shows us all the record single variables that exist inside of our flow. And so we just click that once. And because our screen is automatically setting the um, values of the different fields inside this lead variable, we just have to pass it here and that's it. That's all we have to do. So another benefit of using the record variable is that it's really easy to work with. Um, I just connected the screen to the create lead element. I'm gonna press save. And now let's debug our flow. And so I'm gonna press debug. And then we'll just uh, skip this screen, press run. And now what I need to do is fill in uh, all the different information. So you can see that um, our screen is automatically populating the requirements from the lead record itself, uh, which is another benefit of that fields, um, I guess, using that fields um, section inside the screen element. So we can just say, Mr. Say Bob Apples, our favorite sort of test name. And you can notice that the last name is required here because the last name is required on the lead record. Uh, we can put in the phone and email. So I'll just do 555-444-3333. Email bob at bobapples.com. And when I press next, uh, Salesforce will try to create the lead and it's gonna fail because we didn't add the company uh, to this screen. So let's press next. We'll go through. And I guess we can look at our debug log we see that you know our screen loaded and all the information was collected and it was all added to the lead uh, record variable. And if you look closely here in the debug log, you can see that um, it's like lead record variable dot name. And then this is how it was populated. And then we have lead record variable dot phone. And you know, these this was the value. And then lead record variable dot email. And I want to make it really clear that inside the lead record variable, every single one of the fields kind of exists independently and you can populate them all manually. So we took all that information and we went to uh, create our lead and you can see we got an error where a required field was missing and that required field was the company. And so in this scenario, we left out a field that uh, Salesforce requires, but we could also get this error if someone creates like a validation rule. And what I want to highlight about this is that this type of error kind of leaves a not very pleasant message for the end user. It's like an unhandled fault has occurred in the flow. It's red, it's scary. If you don't know anything about Salesforce, uh, like I've had users actually contact me and be like, did I break Salesforce? Like they think they broke something. Um, and especially with the junior team or people that aren't familiar with universal containers, they you know won't know what happened. So we need to handle that. Um, we need to make sure that our flow fails gracefully. And we're gonna do that now. So let's close this debug. And what we're going to do is create um, another screen. And in fact, we're gonna create two screens. But the first screen we're gonna create um, is gonna seem somewhat out of order when I first show it to you. And we're just getting it on the canvas so that we can connect our create records to another screen. And I'll explain why in a second. So let's drag a screen element over here and I'm just going to call this the final screen. And this is going to be a success message that we show when our flow finishes. And so that's all we're doing here. Uh, we're not even going to customize it right now. We'll come back to this later. And I'm going to press done. And the reason we built that is so that I can connect my create records to this screen. And you may be thinking, well, why is that important? 
and I'm going to press save. And the reason that's important is because once you connect a database element, like the create or update or get or delete records, like one of these records, to another element inside of the freeform layout, if you then drag it again, so the second time, you see how it's already connected to the final screen. If we drag out the connecting line again and connect it to something else, it creates a fault path. And so this is something uh, unique to the freeform layout. In the auto layout, you can just pick a or create a fault path whenever you want. But this fault element um, will fire if this database element fails in some way. And so tying this back to our debug run, you can imagine if Salesforce or if our flow tries to create a lead record and then it fails for some reason, Salesforce will automatically go down the fault path. So let's highlight the fault path that I just created and I'm just gonna delete it. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna drag another screen that's gonna be our error message screen to the canvas. So I'm gonna drag a screen over and I'll just call this error screen. And then to configure the header, I will just uh, hide the header. And then when I'm configuring the footer, I'm going to hide the previous button and I'm gonna hide the pause button. If a user lands on this screen, I don't really want them going backwards and I don't um, really want them pausing. I just want them to say, okay, there was an error, like go forward. And so what we can do now is just show the end user a message. And we're gonna scroll all the way down here to the bottom and we're gonna use this display text uh, element. And so I'm gonna drag the display text here and I'll just call it error uh, message. Oops. And I'm going to make the font really big and I'll just make it like 16. I guess I don't know if that's that big, 18 maybe. And I'll say an error occurred. I don't know how to spell it, occurred. Okay, there we go. <laughs> um, and so what we can do, which is really cool and really unique, um, and something I don't see a lot of flow builders do, but I'm teaching you in this course. So this is kind of an advanced thing that you're getting a sneak peek on. We can say an error message occurred. And then we can click insert a resource. And I can scroll all the way down to the global variables section. And so we've used uh, some of the global variables before when we've been working with record elements. Here, we're gonna select the flow global variable. And inside this flow global variable, um, Salesforce is populating all these values automatically for you. We get a couple ones that we'll probably use later on, like the current date and the current date time. But you can see this third option here is the fault message. So I'm going to click that. And what this will do is it's going to take the fault message of the flow and just uh, show it wherever we put this resource inside the flow. And so if the flow errors out and there's a message, it'll show up here when the screen renders. And this is a really good way for end users to kind of understand that there was an error. They're not gonna know what the fault message was, but they might be able to copy paste it and send it to you as the admin. And so that's what I'll say next. I'll say, uh, if the issue persists, please send this error message to your Salesforce administrator. And now if your end user experiences an error uh, where you know, maybe someone adds a validation rule to a lead uh, six months from now, and it's preventing leads from being created through the screen flow, uh, your users won't get a mean error message. They'll get this error screen instead, and they'll understand the error, they'll understand the validation rule, and they can send it to you to troubleshoot. And I'll just put a period after my statement here. Um, I'll say also, please try again. And if the, oops, if the issue persists, please send this error message to your Salesforce administrator. So let's press done. And now let's drag our create records to our error screen. And again, this fault element will only show up if you already have the database elements, which are all pink on the canvas, connected to something else. And so that's why uh, we needed this final screen here so that we could connect this create records to the final screen and then uh, drag it one more time to the error screen. I'm gonna press save and let's debug this and we'll just go through again and I'll show you what happens um, when the error message fires. So we'll say Mr. Bob Apples is once again, you know, calling in. We can put in a phone number and then we'll just say bob at bobapples.com. We will press next. And you can see that instead of getting a nasty error message that's like red and says unhandled fault, um, 
when the flow runs, we try to create our lead record and it automatically routes to our error screen, which is like an error occurred. And then it tells you exactly what the error is. And you'll notice that this is pulling exactly from the error message over here on the right. And it even has a link to like the SOAP API developer guide. Um, but now the, the, the end user at least knows something. It's like, okay, this failed, I didn't break it. Um, and there's a message that will send the error message to you. And that's really helpful. And this is a technique you can use um, in multiple places and in tons of different flows. And so we'll get more experience with it throughout the course, but I wanted to show it to you now. Uh, this is really powerful. And if you only get one thing out of this entire, um, you know, screen flow or call script flow, make sure you remember this fault element. So we're going to end there and I've saved the flow. And in the next video, um, we'll get that company field added and we'll, uh, do some more testing.